Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. In today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about how to write melodies like John Williams. When I talk about melodies, I'm talking about themes, because we're going to deconstruct a few of his themes. And we're going to talk about continuity of line. Now, continuity of line is what I was talking about in our last episode, where I talked about this octave displacement of lines. So I want to kind of merge those two concepts together and take some of his melodies and see how they're constructed because it's really fascinating. Let's get started. Okay, the first melody I want to talk about is the theme, uh, the Raiders March, or theme to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, many of you know that it's a simple C major melody. It starts on the note E. Now, if we really deconstruct that, so it starts right on E and it walks up. And there's your first interval jump of a fifth. Now, John Williams likes to use a lot of big interval jumps in his melodies. If you think of the Superman theme. It's really like a C5 chord, but it's based off the note G. Okay, once again, that's really a C major melody. So let's talk about the Raiders March. So we got that first interval of a fourth jump there, and then he jumps down to D. So we're on C here. Then he goes D, E, F. Okay, well, what if we actually continue that melody up and went like this? Or we go. That's to lay out the melody in a completely linear fashion ascending. So this first part of the melody uses octave displacement to go, instead of going, he's going. Okay, and then, and then he goes, there's a, a jump there, but that's really almost an entirely scalar melody. If you think of the second half of the melody where it goes, so once again, we have that line continuing on. So that active displacement actually does continue that melody line on from the F to the G, but he jumps down the octave to the G because it's more interesting to the ear because this, that's not quite as interesting as three. If you think about this, that note has a resolution tendency to go down to the E. That's the F, and, but I'm going. I'm using the, the G as a pivot note to then do the delayed resolution on the E. Two, three. If you're thinking about it that way. Two, three, da, 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 da. You hear that? Da, 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 da. I just left out the G. It's kind of... Um, like Shanker analysis, where you leave out, you, you, you grab the important tones and you show kind of where the guideposts are, that where those guide notes are in your melody. So that's a really important feature to notice about this is how these lines, not only do they continue on in the same linear direction, but with the octave displacement down the octave, for example, it's able to continue it and that way it sets up these other internal resolutions like from that. So John Williams is constantly has all these internal line resolution. Okay, so let's take apart the melody a little bit. We start with going up the scale, so E, F, G, C. And then, that's your first cadence point, but it's almost like a half cadence, okay? 
and then it goes to G. Now that B to F tritone actually resolves down like this. If you think about it, that seventh to the third is like, right? So he sets up that note to be resolved there. And it's all, every one of these lines that has a jump is followed by a descending interval and then a walk up. There's our first leap and then we leap down uh, to continue the line even though it's it's from C going down to D. And then the line continues up with that tritone there and then it leaps down to A from F and then resolves itself. It resolves the tritone. That is this octave displacement of the melody which gives it its character and it gives its it's really um, catchy nature to it. There's a video where John Williams talks about one of the tunes, I don't know if it was Raiders of the Lost Ark, but he talks about how much time he spends with hundreds and hundreds of permutations. I've talked about this in one of the other John Williams videos, but he comes up with hundreds of permutations of the melody, just changing one note here and there. He tries to come up with the most memorable, singable, catchy melody that he can come up with. Those are the things that you when you leave the movie theater that you carry home with you. Very few movies do that. John Williams is able to write those melodies like that, and he's written a lot of melodies like that. But this one in particular has some really interesting scalar ideas that also have octave displacement in them. So once again, if I lay it out horizontally where I keep ascending, It's really a scalar line. There's only a couple breaks in it, just where the intervals are. There's a break there where there's a, a perfect fourth interval jump. Then, and that's all scalar. And then it keeps going up. And there's an augmented fourth interval there. And then there's a major third skip. And other than that, that's all scalar from A up to E. Okay, so he's got the fifth there. So this first... Uh, interval, uh, the first part of the melody re revolves around the sixth in the interval. Okay? And then, and there's a, um, uh, filling in a minor third. Okay? So, once again. And then, then you fill in a major third there, and then you have an augmented fourth jump, and then, Then you're filling in that, you're filling in that, uh, that sixth interval. There's your, there's one resolution there, so. You, that could be, that's a cadence point in itself. And that's just a continuation of that cadence. It's almost like the cadence goes on. It could end there. But uh, he, he, he completes it, but he completes it. Now this concept of continuity of line, I talked about in my last video where I was talking about octave displacement. Now, a good thing to practice is to practice your scales in this way where you use displaced notes. I did some of it, I did a chromatic scale on the guitar, but there are ways that you can practice uh, linearly on the piano and to start thinking in ways of, of, of continuity of line where you may have two lines going on independently. So if I play a line like this. So what I'm doing there, I have an ascending line. There's my B and then it resolves there. So. And then C, D, B, okay, and then there's a cadence point there. So this B sets up the C. 
and then and then we go that D sets up the E there so I'm going and then so once again That's a great exercise to practice to get used to displacing octaves and start to think of melodies that actually have multiple lines going on at the same time. So you really have two distinct lines going on. You have this. Okay, that's just an ascending line from C to F. And then. And then you've ended there. And this top line is going like, like this. So you have two lines that are ascending stepwise, but they are separated by this interval, these large intervals. And it really has a nice cadence point. Played up to tempo, it sounds like this. So let's take a look at the Star Wars melody next. It begins in the key of B flat, but starts on the dominant F, and it goes. Okay, that melody, it goes a triplet, an F, and then B flat, F. Once again, there's our large interval jump. Remember I said that John Williams likes to use a lot of wide interval jumps, a lot of open consonances, perfect fours, perfect fifths. So that's simply using the, it's, it's just like the Superman theme, all right, where he's using, he's got just like a... So right there, he's using, the, he's using the perfect fifth in the beginning of the melody. And in Star Wars, he uses the perfect fourth in the beginning. And then he comes right down the scale from F. So you're on F and then... Well, what is he doing there? He's doing the same thing. He's essentially going... Right? Right? So he's going... So he's got F, but he actually goes. Then he goes back to F. Right? So you've got that octave displacement. Um, once again, the second half of the melody, other than this, becomes a scalar melody with active displacement. So you've you've replaced by and then you run C and then so that you hear that internal cadence when you hear from C. That C results ba ba is resolving back to B flat. to look for really strong combinations of intervals like that and you want to look for lines that resolve within themselves you have to have natural resolution tendencies within your melody it doesn't matter if you're playing in twinkle twinkle little star so right here's your first cadence right and then your that's your antecedent and then your your consequent well it's the same thing with these other melodies now it's the same thing with the Superman melody, okay? You've got, you start on G. So once again, so in this case, you're in C major and he's starting on the dominant again, G. When I say the dominant, I mean the fifth scale degree. Star Wars starts on the fifth scale degree. Superman starts on the fifth scale degree, but it goes.
So using this incredibly simple melodic material, there's no notes outside of the C major scale in the entire first part of the Superman theme. Nothing. Essentially, all we have here are, we have a C add nine chord. That's the notes that he's using to draw from. And then until you have the, so you've got your implied, uh, you know, um, A flat sound here, A flat, C major third, B flat, D, and then F, A flat. And I, I believe he goes, it goes to an open fifths there on, on the G. This continuity of line is extremely important in writing great melodies. Things need to resolve within themselves. When you're practicing, you want to think about these things, even if you're practicing simple lines. Let's say I'm playing in the key of C major and I'm gonna use triads from the key of C major. Let's say I'll just use only the diatonic triads with no suspension, so I'm gonna use C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, C. How do I use an exercise like that and play things that sound like they resolve within themselves? Well, one of the ways is to play with the closest leading tone. Now that resolves within itself because I'm using, utilizing, I'm right there as a resolution point. And then I'm gonna go, because I'm this note wanted wants to resolve up to that note in that chord tone to have the certain melodic direction. So if I go, that's one way I could go. Now that right there has a certain type of internal resolution tendency to it. Anytime that there's half steps, you want to take advantage of those in the scale. Okay. So when I did, I used the E to F there. And then I used, um, I'm using a delayed resolution on the E minor chord. I'm going. Uh, so that's moving there, but I have a couple notes. So, resolution, resolution. This idea of continuity of line takes advantage of internal resolutions. You always want to have your melodies sound like they resolve within themselves. They should be able to stand alone. Just like what I'm saying, uh, talking about bebop, and you should be able to hear the chord changes without someone playing them. Any of the solo cello music by Bach, you can hear all the chord changes. It's obvious, even with single lines. Your single line melody should describe the chord progression so well, I mean, we actually call it making the changes, that you did, don't need any accompaniment. It should be all spelled out in the melodic line that you're playing, kind of what the harmonic languages. Now, it's easy when you're playing arpeggios, right? Um, those are really easy resolutions to hear, but when you start getting into more complex ideas with chromaticism in other scales, let's say we do a C alter dominant scale. C, D flat, E flat, F flat, or E. G flat, A flat, B flat, C. So if I go, I'm gonna try and take advantage of some of the half steps in there. There's one there and, and they're there also. So the, that's the area of the scale that I can really uh, take advantage of. So right in the beginning of it, if I play a line like this, right there has an internal resolution using a half step. Or if I do this, or if I do this, Or that's a delayed resolution. This note wants to resolve down there, but I put one note before it. So right there, I'm using all this internal motion that's in the line with these half step resolutions. Listen.
right there is a great example of using those half steps to give me some internal resolutions to my melody. I have another example that I uh, composed, a little etude, that's in the key of C major only, so only white notes. And my chord progression moves from C major to D minor 11 to uh, essentially like A sus2 over E to F major to G sus4 to A aeolian to to A G over B sound or G sus4 over B back to C major. I want you to follow along with the music. I'm going to play it here up to tempo. Check this out. This is an etude using octave displacement with all this internal line movement. Okay, so this is it has all these internal resolutions. We're hearing ideas like this where I go. That was essentially a I'm just going down the scale, I'm going. That was an ascending line, essentially. I mean, there's some descending parts to it, but essentially I'm playing a completely descending melody line that's moving up musically this way. So let's listen to this. Now I'm going to play it a little bit slower so that you can hear these resolutions a little better. You'll probably notice some of the really wide intervals that are going on in the piano in this section right here. I'll turn the strings off for a section. Now listen, listen. chord progressions going on that are gelling with the underlying chords as well. I mean, if you think about this, this etude is soloing over the chord progression that's just moving through the diatonic chord changes in the key of C. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B half diminished essentially. So I'm, I have a melody that's structured to go over that. Now let's listen to it up tempo one more time. One of the reasons that these etudes are usually up-tempo with big flurries of notes and have really high complexity level to them is because I want to teach you how to hear faster. The only way you learn how to hear faster and able to transcribe really fast lines by Mike Brecker or Brad Maldo or Aiden Essen or Kenny Barron or Oscar Peterson is by listening to things that are fast. After a while, you will learn how to actually hear faster. 
So you try and, and grab a hold to longer strings of, of ideas and say, oh, I know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. Because when I'm hearing these things, when I transcribe the solos from Brad Meldow, the, those lines, and Kenny Barron, when I hear these things, I'm like, okay, I know what that is. I know what that is. I recognize these sounds as long, long units of sound. And uh, it's like Coltrane's sheets of sound. I want you to begin to hear faster and faster and longer series of notes. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book or making a donation directly to me because you love my channel, you can write me at rickbeato number one at gmail.com, which is also my PayPal address. I'm trying to grow my channel right now to bring you even more interesting and informative content, including video series on orchestration and live demonstrations of every instrument in the orchestra. I'm also trying to expand my channel to include interviews with well-known musicians, artists, and film scoring composers. Thanks again for watching. I'm Rick Beato.